sauna until she hits the track. I'm a pretty laid back person, but when it comes to track, I feel like I have this alter ego and just go to this other place and get into that um, aggressive mode. At the Olympic Games, I mean, after I've gotten second twice, it's something I've been waiting for a long, long time. So um, I know that'll be uh, just a really great race. If I'm able to get a gold here, it would mean the world to me. It's definitely been a very long journey with, you know, lots of ups and downs, and hopefully it all comes together, and I think it would just make it all that more special. And there's Allison focusing down the track, getting ready for her semifinal. And Tom, no competitor in the sprint comes in with a bigger margin over the second best person in the world in their event. Allison Felix is four tenths faster than the second fastest one in the world this year, Sonia Richards Roth. That new personal best at the Olympic trials, 21.69, made her the fourth fastest ever at this distance. And between herself and Veronica Campbell Brown, they have won every global championship in this event, Olympic and world, since 2004. Veronica Campbell Brown has already made the final. Now it's Allison's turn to try to do the same. Allison Felix will be in lane four in this semifinal heat. In lane five, Muriel Ahure of the Ivory Coast. Finished uh, seventh in the hundred earlier here in London. Ten women have run faster this year, but Ahure has been the sort of form this year. But if she can start to set some personal best, she can possibly factor in the final. The Ivory Coast does not have any real Olympic sprint history in this event. Felix in four, Ahure in five. Six. And off to run the curve in this 200 meter semifinal. Ahure got away well, and Allison Felix now starting to catch up. And as they turn for home, it's Allison Felix in front. Felix is in front with Ahure second. Here's Allison. She's opened up quite a margin and will close to the finish line to win her heat with Ahure second. Tom, I don't think there's any doubt that Allison Felix will start in the 200-meter Olympic final that she's just qualified for as a huge favorite because despite this 2231 look at her start there she is she's in lane four having a hooray to her outside is a pretty good dress rehearsal because if she gets veronica campbell brown to her outside in that final this is how she's gonna have to make that move in the transition from turn to straight and then continue to keep going using that 400 meter strength that saw her win the silver medal at the world championships of 400 last year but i don't think allison felix look at how much she's looking up at the big board i don't think allison felix was any more than 70 percent of maximum effort in this semifinal. now let's go down to lewis with allison felix well allison when you came to olympic stadium tonight what was your race plan as you attacked this semifinal? i wanted to throw that good 120 see where i was and control it from there can you help people understand how hard it is to wait all day to come out here for that short of an effort? Oh my gosh, it's so hard. I'm sitting in my room, I'm watching Scandal, I'm just trying to hang out, but it's so uh, rewarding when you do come out here. Now, when you do walk out the next time, you'll be the heavy favorite for the gold medal. How do you deal with that in your head as you prepare for that run? For me, I'm just focused, you know. Nothing is guaranteed, and you just have to get through everything. Right, thanks, Alan. Hey, thanks, guys. So Allison is focused and ready for the final, winning her heat in 22.31. Ahure also qualifies. And up next, Sonia Richards-Ross, already the gold medalist in the 400 meters. She won the title on Sunday. Now back to try to double and take the 200 meters as well. She is the second fastest woman in the world this year's assistance. Only Allison Felix has run faster. Acknowledging the cheers. And also in the seat is Shelly Ann Fraser Price of Jamaica, the London 100 meter winner. Back to back gold medals at 100 meters. And this is her first time competing in the 200 meters at a global championship. This is an event that she has said she hates. 
but she does have the third fastest time in the world. And I can tell you something, I do not expect her to do anything other than try to go for broke on the turn and hang on because she will respect the strength of the quarter mile Olympic champion, Sonia Richards Ross, to her outside. Here are the lane assignments. Shelly Ann Fraser Price in lane four. Sonia Richards Ross in lane five. So already in this heat, already uh, two gold medalists from London. Shelly Ann Fraser Price in the hundred. Sonia Richards Ross in the four hundred. And there are the gold medalists side by side. And now they meet in the middle. The 400 meter winner and the 100 meter winner at 200. And I can tell you these two ladies are sort of unknown quantities. Sonia Richards Ross said that she got to the final at the Olympic trials and was very tired. I've already told you how much Shelly Ann Fraser Price says she hates this event. But they've got to get to the final here. Fraser Price got away well, and Richard Ross already making up the stagger as they run the curve and head for the home straightaway. Richard Ross and Fraser Price, they're right together. Fraser Price now searches ahead. Richard Ross trying to close the gap. Coming to the finish, and they'll be side by side. Richard Ross looks like she leans for the win, but Fraser Price in second place. Well, Tom, it looks like Shelly Ann Fraser Price's plan went just about perfectly until the last 20 meters. There's Shelly Ann Fraser Price. There's Sonia Richards Ross. Good. Fraser Price is in four. Richards Ross is in five. Look at how urgently Shelly Ann Fraser Price ran this turn. I told you she did not want to deal with the strength of Sonia Richards Ross at the end, but she didn't separate enough. So now when she starts to tire a little bit, here comes that quarter mile strength of Sonia, and she gets to the line first. She'll have a preferred lane for the final. Fraser Price hangs on for a second, and she too is through to the Olympic final. So a couple of gold medalists looking for doubles in the 200 final tomorrow night. And let's go to Lewis who has Sonia Richards Ross. Well, Sonia, how important was that lean at the take for the win in the semifinals? Well, in the semifinals, if you're not in the top four shuffle, you risk getting one of the lanes on the inside. And so I really wanted to set myself up to get a good lane for tomorrow. So I knew if I won, I'd secure that. All right, so you are in the final, but what's the fatigue factor like at this game, for the game? Well, I've been preparing for this mentally and physically leading up to these games. And so I just keep thinking this is your first race, and have fun, and I'm doing that. So I'm just really happy. All right, thank you. Thanks, Louis. So Sonia heads to the final, having won in 22.30 with Shelly Ann Fraser Price in second place. So the finals now, tomorrow night, will include Sonia Richards Ross, Allison Felix, Carmelita Jetter, plus the Jamaicans Veronica Campbell Brown and Shelly Ann Fraser Price. Now let's go to Dwight Stones for a report on the men's high jump. And this final is shaping up to be a good one. Reigning world champion American Jesse Williams, certainly a favorite. Defending Olympic champion Andre Silnov, no man has ever repeated as Olympic high jump champion. He would like to be the first. And Robbie Graybar is a great Britain. He has the hot hand in 2012, plus he has the crowd behind him. This is Mutaj Barshim, 21-year-old Qatarian. Very, very slight, but incredibly strong. The bar at 7-6, and the 21-year-old is over with a slight brush on his first attempt. He's been very effective indoors and out. He is one to look for in the future. 21-year-old Eric Kennard, two-time NCAA champion for the Kansas State Wildcats. He took 7-8 winning that title this year. Second at the U.S. Trials. His first attempt at 7-6. And with a slight brush, he's over it. And he's caught in the crossbar now. Believe me, Eric, that thing has a mind of its own. Don't make it mad. Here's another NCAA champion twice for Indiana University. Derek Druin, he had a severe ankle injury last year that ended his season, but has come back very, very strong. 22 years old, first attempt at 7-6, and a huge clearance for the Canadian. 
Rick Robbie Grabars has had a dream season in 2012. Seven personal bests. He really got serious because the games were in his own country. 2012 European champion. First attempt at 7-6 and over very easily. So Graybar's right in the mix. And the crowd will certainly carry him along throughout the competition. Now here's something you can't do. Jesse Williams has had one miss at 7-6. And he has a very concerned look on his face. He's looking very tight. You just can't have misses at intermediate heights like this. And he's changed everything. He looks so good at the previous height, 7-4.5 very much like he did at the World Championships last year. But he simply has just struggling now. This is a very fast surface, and he's getting to the bar in the right place, but really is tight. So two misses at 7-6 for the World Champion. Here's 35-year-old Jamie Nieto. He was fourth in Athens eight years ago. This is his second attempt at 7-6, and he's over clean. That's just an inch under his season best. So Williams will be down to a third attempt at 7-6. But Jamie Nieto and Eric Kennard of the U.S. are through to the next height.